Last year, the White House put forth an initiative called uh, the uh, National Day of Civic Hacking. The idea was to promote the use of science and technology to improve communities across the nation. Uh, St. Louis found out about it kind of late. Um, so we, we only got about a month, month and a half lead time, but we, we quickly threw something together. Uh, we were one of uh, 93 sites across the country in 83 different cities. Um, for those of you in St. Louis, you'll remember last year we had roughly a thousand tornadoes hit our airport last year, um, and that was this weekend. Um, so this is a picture from our event last year. We only had about 30 people show up. Um, but we had three groups. They produced something really cool. Uh, this is actually the winning group. They managed to make uh, an automated phone tree for placing uh, the homeless in shelters. Uh, because right now, you basically you make a phone call and you get put on hold for 20 to 45 minutes while somebody else calls shelter after shelter after shelter. Um, it's a pain, it's inefficient, and it's, it's bad for people. Um, but probably the most important thing to come out of this was the Open Data uh, St. Louis group. So uh, Brett Lord Castillo, who's part of St. Louis County Emergency Services, kind of led up this, uh, this effort. Um, and we've been working to try to get St. Louis to open up the publicly produced data. Uh, a great example is metro transit data. Um, you know, where are the buses? Uh, they all have GPS trackers. You can't just go to a website and see where that is. So why is this important? Uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, education. Uh, Monsanto, um, well, well, we'll get to that in a second. But so education, it's important for research. It empowers citizens. It helps with entrepreneurship. So education-wise, you have companies like Monsanto that deal with a lot of data, and they need data scientists who know how to work with that data. But without open data to teach people on, it's really hard to educate people on how to do it. And so they use stuff like open data to train these data scientists so that when they go work for a company, they know how to use the tools. Um, it's also helpful for research. Um, there's another local entrepreneur named Arnaldo who runs a company called Sim Machines. And by looking at Twitter data, he was actually able to accurately predict the outcome of the Costa Rican elections, and more importantly, to locate fraud, uh, voter fraud that was going on. Um, and that's the kind of thing that's made available if uh, data's there. Uh, Ellie Lammer is, in terms of empowering students, Ellie Lammer, when she was 12 years old, went around and timed parking meters in Berkeley uh, because they were cheating people. Um, and that was her science project, and there's actually a law named after her now. Um, if, if that data was public, she wouldn't have to do that. I mean, she spent months going around with a stopwatch timing these things, uh, and that shouldn't be necessary. And then finally, um, entrepreneurship. Uh, going back to the transit example, if you go into the App Store right now, there are like 30 to 100, I don't know the actual number, um, apps available uh, to make public transit useful, right? So it used to be if you get on the bus, you have to get the schedule, and it's annoying. Then it was Google Maps, and now there's like this whole interactive uh, real-time solution. So the National Day of Civic Hacking. For this year, we wanted to increase the size. We wanted to reach more non-technical people. Uh, we wanted to, of course, make St. Louis a better place. Um, and we wanted to develop more leadership in St. Louis. Uh, as part of this, I, like you said, I worked with a lot of different groups. One of the things I noticed, every group is the same problem. 60 people are part of it. Three people do all the work. Uh, and so we're trying to better educate and empower people to take on more of those leadership roles. Uh, so to make that up, first we'll have the hackathon. Uh, that's an important part of this project, and we're still going to do it. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the hackathon, basically we're going to get as many nerds together as we can. We're going to throw them in a room. We're going to give them access to a bunch of data sets and APIs, and we're going to tell them to make something awesome for St. Louis. And that's it. Um, <laughs> it's a simple model. We provide them food. They work for 48 hours. Um, but there's that. We also want to do physical events. So uh, right now we're partnered with Urban Harvest STL to do community gardens around St. Louis. We also want to reach out to Habitat for Humanity to build a house. Uh, there's a group called Zombie Squad that does disaster preparation. Uh, that's just way too fun not to work with. Um, but in, in terms of reaching out to non-technical people, physical stuff is an important part of this. Uh, we also want to do training sessions. Uh, probably 50 to 60 throughout the St. Louis and County covering topics like entrepreneurship, crypt cryptocurrency, programming, uh, event planning, uh, things that will help people do stuff after this weekend. Because as much as we can, we can cram into this weekend, there's going to be stuff afterwards, right? We want to see an ongoing impact. <sighs> okay, so um, <laughs> we, uh, we're also going to be announcing our Code for America Brigade for St. Louis. Uh, we're going through that process now. We're also raising funds. 
uh, to bring some uh, fellows here. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, Code for America works with local governments to uh, work on open data projects. Um, we're also going to be announcing a big data lab at the T-Rex. So this isn't our project, this is somebody else, but they want to announce it with us. Um, but a, a big lab with researchers and tools and equipment and the resources necessary so that if you're an entrepreneur, you can go and you can tackle these problems even if you don't really know what you're doing. Um, obviously, this is a big project, right? I just described like a thousand things happening that weekend. So in order to do that, we're having to partner with a lot of organizations. It, you know, a community effort like this can only be done if it's a community effort. Uh, so this is a small sampling. We're contacting over 100 organizations um, about different stuff. So if you're interested in getting involved, you can get in touch with me. Uh, my email's on the last slide. Um, I'd be happy to talk to you or you know, come talk to me afterwards and I'll, I'll get you some contact information. We'll set up some time to talk because we want to get as much of St. Louis involved as we can. So, and with that, uh, I guess, are there any questions? Great, thank you very much. <laughs>